I got a request under one of my videos. As I said, uh, as I say in my other videos, I uh, I do accept uh, requests for future videos. And one of the people uh, who left a comment and they wanted a video on a substance called berberine. Uh, berberine is a bioactive compound. It's extracted from several different plants, including a group of shrubs called berberize. It, it technically, it, technically, it belongs to a class of compounds called alkali alkaloids. So does caffeine. Caffeine is also an alkaloid. It tends to be bitter. Uh, berberine has a yellow color and has often been used as a dye. I, I will say from the on onset, uh, I myself, I would never use berberine. I would, this is not a supplement I would ever use. Uh, I'm going to give you information on it in this video. If you choose to use it, that's up to you. But I think as I discuss some of the uh, effects of berberine uh, and uh, some of the possible side effects and interactions, you'll see why I do my, I myself, also the quality of uh, berberine supplements, this is why I'm, I myself would not bother to ever use berberine, even though it theoretically could be useful to me because I'm pre-diabetic. I use a medica medication called metformin, and berberine, as uh, as, I, as I'll say later, it's been actually uh, favorably compa uh, favorably compared to metformin in its actions on controlling blood glucose levels. Anyway, one of the main actions of berberine, and what it has in common with metformin, is that it it, it activates an enzyme called AMP activated protein kinase, AMPK. AMPK is the energy sensor in muscles. AMK, AMPK is activated, for example, when muscle glycogens are low. AMPK is activated. It allows your muscles to burn more fat. Uh, unfortunately, AM, AMPK also tends to inhibit muscle protein synthesis. So it's good at certain times and bad at others. But in relation to uh, blood uh, glucose control, uh, it, it's uh, considered very good. And by the way, Metformin for years, it was thought to work by stimulating AMPK, but more recent studies show that it actually works by inhibiting uh, a, uh, uh, let's say, a pathway in mitochondria that produces energy. Uh, so that uh, anyway, that's that's another story. Anyway, many studies show that berberine can su significantly reduce blood sugar levels in individuals with type 2 diabetes, and it seems to work through several mechanisms, and the mechanisms include it decreases insulin resistance. That's my problem. That's what makes me uh, pre-diabetic. I have diabetes rampant throughout my family. My grandfather's had it. My father had it. My father died of complications, uh, heart failure due to uh, diabetic complications. So uh, I do everything right. I exercise. I don't eat sugars. I don't eat junk food. I try and stay in a good shape, but uh, nonetheless, I still have insulin resistance. Uh, and uh, I, luckily, I do keep it under control. It very it almost never do, uh, it never develops into symptoms of full blown diabetes. I do that by exercise and diet. Anyway, uh, berberine works. They think by helping to decrease insulin resistance, uh, thus making insulin more effective. It also increases glycolysis, uh, which basically is the breakdown of of, uh, of sugar in cells. Uh, the breakdown of glucose is called glycolysis. It, it, uh, uh, Berberine also decreases blood uh, blood glucose production in the liver, as does metformin, and it also slows the breakdown of carbohydrates in the gut. Now, I should point out that uh, the the main mechanism uh, uh, for efficacy for berberine is thought to be its stimulation of AMPK, but there's another school of thought that says that berberine helps to lower blood glucose by causing gastrointestinal um, uh, malabsorption it actually interferes with the absorption of nutrients in the uh, in the intestine now when it comes to glucose that, that that might be okay but if it's affecting other nutrients it's not so good uh, because of that that's one of the reasons why I myself would not touch uh, this stuff berberine you know uh, that's only a kind of a I mean there's a couple of studies that showed that but whether it's a really a major effect is still up in the air but I don't like the fact that one of the major side effects of berberine is gastrointestinal uh, problems or pain or bloating, whatever. It also another reason why another way it helps to control blood glucose is by uh, increasing the number of beneficial bacteria in the gut. This is called the gut microbiome. Uh, it's uh, you don't have to use uh, uh, berberine to increase the uh, b uh, the number of beneficial bacteria. You can do that by eating fiber uh, and also 
some of my past, just as a tangential statement here, some of my past uh, videos, especially the one I did on the carnivore diet, a lot of people commented that fiber is not required in human nutrition. Uh, theoretically, that's true. But uh, the thing is, if you don't have fiber, you get in trouble from a health point of view because fiber is the main source, food source, for the intestinal microbiome. So, you know, without fiber, you, you can get into trouble sooner or later. So anyone who tells you that you don't need to eat any fiber, walk away from them. They know nothing whatsoever about nutrition. I don't care if they call themselves doctors. They're full of crap, period. Anyway, in one 2008 study of, of 116 diabetic patients, 1,000 1, milligrams of berberine a day lowered fasting blood sugar by 20%. That's pretty good. In other words, the blood sugar went from 7 to 5.6 millimeters per liter, or uh, put it another way, it went from 126 to 101 milligrams per deciliter. 126, by the way, resting blood glucose of 126 is considered, uh, that's diabetic level, although the more efficient way to, uh, to test for diabetes is hemoglobin A1C, which is a test of, of uh, blood glucose levels over a longer period of time. But anyway, most doctors... Uh, well, a lot of doctors will argue this, but 126 is generally considered the cutoff level for diabetes. In this study, berberine lowered uh, the blood glucose from 126 down to 101. Uh, so five of the study subjects did have constipation, though, after they uh, used a berberine. Not all of them, but five of them did. It also lowered hemoglobin A1C by 12%. As I said, that's a marker for long-term blood sugar levels or blood glucose levels. And it also improved bl blood lipids like cholesterol and triglycerides. According to a review of 14 studies, berberine is as effective as, as oral diabetes, diabetes drugs, including metformin, lipizide, and rosiglitazone. That's a tough one to pronounce. I wouldn't touch any of that stuff except metformin. But anyway, one study found that ingesting 500 milligrams of berberine three times a day was effective, was as effective in, in controlling blood glucose that's 1,500 milligrams of metformin. That's a pretty high dose of metformin since it only goes up to 2,000 milligrams. The range is 500 to 2,000 from metformin. Uh, to, some studies indicate that you can lose uh, weight or body fat with using berberine. This would, again, be related to the AMPK effect because, as I noted, AMK, AMPK stimulates the oxidation of fat muscles. In a 12-week study in obese individuals, the uh, subject who took 500 milligram three times a day, it, it led to a, a loss of five, uh, five pounds of weight loss on average. The participants also lost 3.6% of their body fat. Modest, you know, I wouldn't call this a fat-burning drug, uh, or I wouldn't call it a fat-burning supplement. Another more impressive study was conducted in 37 men and women with a metabolic syndrome. The metabolic syndrome is a constellation of syndromes, uh, a constellation of symptoms, including having a wider waist, uh, elevated blood glucose, elevated blood fats, uh, and also uh, you know, like elevated triglycerides, uh, you know. And uh, anyway, that's the metabolic syndrome. It's considered a precursor for cardiovascular disease and diabetes. 37 men and women in the study had the metabolic syndrome. The study lasted for three months, and the participants took 300 milligrams three times a day of uh, berberine. Uh, they dropped their body mass index levels from 31 to 27 or from obese to overweight in three months. So the body mass index is a very bad way of measuring uh, body fat, by the way. Every champion bodybuilder is going to show up off as obese. The body max, it, it's a height to weight. To, it, you know, without going into detail, forget about the body max. Body ma Anyone who knows anything about physiology, it's a joke. It doesn't take into account muscle mass. But anyway, that study did that. They lost, but these people lost belly fat and improved many health markers. The researchers believe that the weight loss is caused by improved function of fat regulating hormones such as insulin, adiponectin, and leptin. Berberine also appears to inhibit the growth of fat cells at the molecular level by inhibiting the development of fat cells. It actually inhibits the development of new fat cells. It, it inhibits the the uh, the uh, passage or the or the synthesis of fat in fat cells. That's pretty good. Uh, it also inhibits uh, enzymes that are related to uh, increased body fat. According to, uh, 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 you know, related to uh, cardiovascular disease, uh, a, a review of 11 studies showed that ber uh, berberine lowers total cholesterol by an average of 24 milligrams per deciliter. It lowers LDL cholesterol, low-density lipoprotein, by 25 milligrams per deciliter. 
It lowers blood triglycerides, uh, an average of 44 milligrams per deciliter, and it raises HDL cholesterol by 2 milligrams per deciliter, which is not that impressive. It also has been shown to lower apolipoprotein B by 13 to 15%. That's more impressive because apolipoprotein B is the precursor protein for low-density lipoprotein cholesterol, which is associated uh, when it's oxidized with cardiovascular disease. Now, according to some studies, berberine works by inhibiting an enzyme called PCSK9. That, that, that leads to less LDL circulating in the bloodstream. Some of the newest cardiovascular drugs also work by, by inhibiting the same enzyme, PCSK9. Uh, the drugs, however, to, to, uh, used to treat uh, cardiovascular disease are, uh, do have side effects, and they're very expensive. Other, some other benefits said to occur with uh, berberine u intake include uh, well, animal studies, uh, when they gave it to rats, the rats were less depressed. Don't ask me to tell you how, how they test whether a rat's depressed. I have no idea. Maybe they don't watch the animal channel. I don't know. Uh, the, uh, uh, the test tube and animal studies also shown that it can reduce the growth and spread of various different types of cancer. Again, test tube and animal studies, no human studies. These, these must be considered preliminary until it's shown to be true with human subjects. It all, uh, berberine also has antioxidant and anti-inflammatory effects uh, it, it, uh, in some studies, you know, which is also good for your health. Uh, it seems to help fight infections by uh, certain uh, harmful microorganisms, including bacteria, viruses, fungi, and parasites. Uh, the fatty liver or, or non-alcoholic fatty liver is epidemic right now, and uh, because of uh, the stimulation of AMPK, Berberine could theoretically uh, help reduce the fat buildup in the liver, which could, would protect against the onset of non-alcoholic fatty liver. Uh, one study showed that it drastically reduced the symptoms and reduced the risk of death in heart failure patients. It's only one study. What about the dose? Many of the studies cited in the, uh, you know, in the uh, literature uh, list ranges of uh, 900 to 1,500 milligrams a day. The best way to take it, though, is in uh, split doses because when you take larger doses, like 1,500 milligrams at a time, there's a much, much greater chance of gastrointestinal side effects, including stomach cramps and diarrhea. The best way to take it is 500 milligrams three times a day before meals or during or right after meals, total of 1,500 milligrams. It has a half-life of several hours, so it's you, you want to kind of spread it out. Take you know If you take 500 three times a day, spread it out, you know, 500 in the morning, 500 in the afternoon, 500 in the evening. That'll, that'll keep the blood levels more stable. Uh, the, as far as the bioavailability, in other words, how much your body can actually absorb, very low for berberine, very low. It's, it's said to be less than 5% absorbed. A rat study showed it was only 0.68% absorbed. Uh, however, you can increase the absorption by using a, a, a certain medium chain fatty acid called sodium caprate. Sodium caprate works by kind of spreading the intestinal cells. It kind of opens them up a little bit. And uh, this uh, increases the absorption of uh, berberine. I don't know if that's a great idea, uh, you know, uh, to uh, mess around with the intestinal cells like that. Uh, I personally would not take that risk. You should also know that there's a real problem with berberine quality as far as the supplements. For example, a 2016 review of 15 berberine supplements sold in the U.S. found that the products contained an average of only 75% of the potency listed on the product label. Some products contained as little as 33%. And now remember, you only absorb less than 5%. So, you know, these things are probably as good, you know, berberine is not a, it's a fairly expensive supplement. And, you know, you take something that's, let's say, 33% of the label, and you're only absorbing 5%, it's doing nothing. You're not going to get a thing out of that. When consumer, uh, when, the, when, the, when the website consumerlab.com tested berberine supplements, one out of four, but 25% failed to meet label claims. See, that's the reason why I, I wouldn't mess with berberine. I mean, you know, the quality control is so bad, you never even know, what, you know, whether you're getting the full potency. Plus, it, you know, it, it, in about, I'd say about half the users, they, get the, they do get a gas, even if they use the right dosage, they still get like gastrointestinal cramps and stuff, diarrhea. I, no, I, you know, I, I take them in form. I've been taking it for years. Stimulates AMPK just like berberine. I don't have a single side effect. I know some people do. I have never had one single side effect 
from using uh, uh, metformin doses up to 1500 milligrams a day. Now, as I said, the side effects of berberine can include cramping and diarrhea. It can, it can also inhibit certain liver enzymes that are involved in the metabolism of drugs. So, for example, berberine, you know, by inhibiting these uh, enzymes, it increases the levels of such drugs as statin drugs, which are used to treat cardiovascular disease. Viagra, wait a minute, I know what you guys are thinking. I'm going to take berberine with my Viagra to, uh, you know, increase the uh, potency. Don't do it. Don't do it. Because, Vi because too much Viagra can cause really bad problems. I'm not going to get into what they are, but don't get, don't, don't get over enthusiastic about it. If you really want to increase the potency of your Viagra, there's a much safer way to do it. Take three grams a day of arginine, the amino acid arginine. A recent study showed taking 3,000 milligrams of arginine a day with Viagra greatly increases the, uh, the benefic beneficial effects of Viagra. Uh, another drug that, uh, that berberine can interfere, increase the amount in the blood, ibuprofen used to, you know, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory for pain. It can also increase uh, the uh, level of beta bl blocker drugs used to treat heart disease and high blood pressure and also some antidepressant drugs. One man who ingested 1,200 milligrams of berberine daily for two months, he developed a, a skin rash all over his body. It disappeared two weeks after he stopped ingesting the berberine. So that's about it for berberine. As I said, I uh, you know, did this uh, video because somebody requested it. And I have to admit, berberine is a very, very interesting substance. But in my mind, it has too many drawbacks. You know, I mean, you could try it and see if it works for you. If what I've told you in this video is somewhat intriguing and you want to try it, you know, you can try the 500 milligrams three times a day. If it's not doing anything, you've probably been unlucky enough to find an underdose supplement. But, you know, hopefully, you, you know, you'll, you'll be lucky and get one that works. That's about it for berberine. If you want to have the best information you'll ever find anywhere, anywhere on nutrition, exercise science, ergogenic aids, women's health and fitness, uh, anti-aging research, hormonal therapy, fat loss techniques that work, uh, exercise science, did I say that? I'm not sure. <laughs> anyway, uh, women's health and fitness, subscribe today to my Applied Metabolics newsletter. Oh, supplement science too. As I did in this video, I'll tell you which supplements work, which supplements don't. Say, I'll save you a lot of money from that alone. And of course, you have my 50, almost 58 years of uh, experience in st both study and in practical empirical knowledge from working out in the gym and knowing what works and doesn't work. All of this is incorporated in my Applied Metabolics newsletter. So, you know, subscribe today at W. It's 40 to 50 pages every month, by the way. No advertisements, not trying to sell you anything. Uh, uh, www.appliedmetabolics.com. Uh, when you subscribe, I'll send you an invitation to join my private uh, uh, Applied Metabolics Facebook page every day. I put new information on medicine, science, nutrition, exercise every day. I also answer questions on the Facebook page. I have an email portal on my Applied Metabolics website. It's strictly for subscribers, current subscribers only. I don't answer unsolicited questions. However, you're welcome to leave comments under any of these videos. Uh, if, I, if I have time, I'll, I'll try to answer short questions, uh, but I, I can't guarantee that. I do guarantee answering questions from paid subscribers to my Applied Metabolics newsletter. So that's about it. Uh, if you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, go, go to your local shelter, adopt a dog. Thank you for listening.